All right, we have our next question. Go ahead. Tom, you're good. <laughs> Hi, Thank everyone. You. I'm Michelle Langdahl from Thomson Reuters in Egan. And we know across the state, employers are having a hard time finding qualified workers to fill their positions, particularly high paying technical jobs. What is your plan specifically at the higher ed and at the high school level to connect students to the workers and to connect those employers to these people? Thank you. Senator Han, we'll start with you. Well, I think it's a great question and there's a lot of, I think, things you can point to, but one of the things that has been talked about a lot is what can we do to provide opportunities for people to work without necessarily having to go through the formal uh, college education? Uh, there, we have to think about how you provide people who are leaving high school or are in high school to get connected with businesses and to learn the things that they need to learn to be productive. Other countries do this. I think other states have done it. I think we're a little bit behind in that score. But a couple of uh, months ago, I had a chance to go up to northern Minnesota to the 49ers uh, working. Uh, they've got a great facility where they train people. There must be a 49er here, but they, they, they have a great program that trains people to be, and these are great jobs. I think it's a wonderful model, and they do that without any tax help from the state. They do it on their own. So I think one of the things that we have to be thinking about is how do you get people prepared for, for the jobs that are available today? It's not just getting everybody to college. That's a very expensive proposition. A lot of people come out of college with a high debt and no job. But get them connected with businesses that know where the work is and get them skilled up on those, tra on those things that they need to know. Speaker Doubt? I think the, the real answer to this question is everything we can. Um, the, the problem is huge, and, and we hear about it all over, and, and I think it's a problem that, that probably more disproportionately affects greater Minnesota, uh, where they're trying to find the workforce uh, and match it up to the jobs that they have available. And, and you know, we really need to make sure that we're matching up our high schools uh, with our colleges and, and, and with our vo vocational and, and tech programs uh, and, and really training the workforce for the jobs that are out there. Uh, and I think that has changed over time. And frankly, I think our education system is lagging behind. So uh, my big answer is everything we can, but we really need to match those two up and make sure that, that we understand that we're starting in high school, uh, exposing those kids to the fact that the jobs might be different out there, uh, but they're great opportunities nonetheless. Um, and get their interest peaked in, in, in finding out new things about these different job opportunities in, in programs that maybe our traditional four-year schools uh, aren't exposing them to. And we shouldn't push people through our four-year schools or into our four-year schools and let that become a business. We really need to make sure that what we're turning out uh, is a workforce that's ready for the jobs that are out there. Um, and I think you have to do that by matching them up. Senator Bach, in 2013, uh, the legislature repealed the requirement to pass the graduation test in order to get a high school diploma. Given that employers are uh, saying that uh, they're seeing prospective employees without some of these basic skills, is it maybe time to uh, revisit that idea, whether or not there should be a, a basic skills test? Well, I, <clears throat> on the subject of workforce development again, let, let me just say, uh, I can't tell you what we're going to announce tomorrow because I have to show the courtesy to the governor because ultimately we need his signature on a bill and uh, uh, Chancellor Rosenstone is going to be very involved in what the Senate is, is going to propose tomorrow. But uh, Senator Bonoff has been working with a lot of members of the business community, large and small, about a new delivery model in our higher educational system. They started calling it the pipeline and I told her you got to find a shorter acronym than that. So they've started to call it Earn to Learn. And it is a new model in higher education where, uh, where students in the higher education system are actually going to be work as apprentices in businesses. And it, it is uh, something I'm very, very excited about. I agreed to co-author the bill today. We need a little different delivery model so that the skill set that students come out of the higher education with are going to match up with employers. And then the second thing that we're going to unveil tomorrow Many of you in this room are going to go, holy man, are you kidding? It's going to be significant and it's going to revolve around vocational education. We have lost our way in vocational education. You can drive all around this state and see help wanted signs for welders and all kinds of blue, blue collar occupations. I mean, when I got my hair cut last week, the barber told me that we had a shortage of 2,000 barbers in this state. All over there are hands-on jobs where we have vacancies. But because in our K-12 system we've become so reliant on testing, we've lost our way in industrial education. 
And they're very, as a carpenter, I can tell you, they're very honorable degrees. And there's something that feels really good at the end of the day. There, there is something that feels really good at the end of the day to actually be able to physically accomplish something. So we're going to make an effort in the Senate to raise the emphasis on vocational education. As us baby boomers start to cycle out, there's going to be tremendous job opportunities in blue-collar occupations, and we can't wait until the so shortage is even more severe than it already is today. So tomorrow we're going to try to set the bar a little higher in the Senate. I'm looking forward. I think it's going to have something that's going to have tremendous bipartisan support. I'm looking forward to rolling it out tomorrow. I, I like how you cushion the blow that we baby boomers are going to be cycled out. I hope that means, you know, on a bicycle or something as opposed a, 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 a to... A Harley. <laughs> yes, good. that would be nice too. Uh, Mr. Minority Leader, your thoughts on this? Uh, well, I, you know, I think everybody has kind of said what needs to be said on this. I, I guess the one area that I would also focus on uh, as we're talking about this is the number of uh, young girls that we lose in the, in the math and science area, you know, as they move through junior high into high school, uh, we're losing a great deal of talent and expertise as they kind of get turned off from that for whatever reason. Uh, and I'm, you know, personally living through this a little bit right now. That's why it comes to mind uh, with my daughter. But we really need to, I think, figure out a way to reach those girls so we're not losing half our population to what really will be the future of our economy. Um, you can tell the but, half but, of the room that has daughters, yeah, that's you right. can see. Yeah. But on testing, I just do want to touch on that, uh, kind of the re in reintroducing the grad, the grad test. Uh, I don't know if that's the right way to, to, to go on this. Uh, and I, you know, we did make some changes in the last time around, but the conversations I've had with the business community and others is that the test that we had uh, didn't really, you know, the, the whole thing is that we don't know what people actually know. And every, the business community would come in and say, the test that we actually have doesn't tell us anything about what these students know. So what we need to do is actually sit down around a table and figure out the best way to get the information out about what they know in terms of having a job in the future and whether that's certification like we see in the software world and some other worlds where you can get a separate certification with your graduation that would actually be informative to, to colleges, would actually be informative to businesses as you graduate. I mean, that seems to be the discussion we ought to have instead of having this recycled discussion we always have about some high stake tests, which as Tom mentioned, doesn't serve a lot of needs who, of people that are, are gonna go into vocational, uh, vocational stuff. Uh, and doesn't serve the needs of the businesses that I've talked to. So I hope that's the conversation we can have. Well, we know education will be at the top of the agenda. Governor Dayton has put it there, and I know all of you are interested in that, so we'll be following that very closely.